Welcome to a world where particles, vibrations, and light collide. A place where leading industry experts and healers come together to discuss controversial topics that will challenge your beliefs and expand your mind. From quantum physics to metaphysics, no topic is off limits, but this is not your typical podcast. I'd like to know if you could give us some uh, pointers on dealing with the triggers. Well, remember, you can't get triggered unless you have a belief that you can be triggered, right? The triggers happen when we feel like we have no control. The triggers happen when we feel like we're a victim. The triggers happen when we feel like somebody's in our space, right? Those are all triggers. And so if you understand, if you're able to stay in the space of, it's an interesting thought you've got. It's a show guaranteed to make you question your assumptions and push you to expand your horizons. For those who are already fascinated or passionate about the work of Patty Conklin, this show will give you an inside look into the mind of one of the industry's most renowned figures in vibrational mediation. With over 28 years of experience and a long list of big name collaborations, Patty's insights and perspectives will inspire and challenge even the most seasoned practitioners. And if you're the skeptic who doesn't believe in vibrational mediation, this show is for you. Healers, doctors, and scientists are just a few of the professions represented by our fascinating visitors that bring their unique perspective to every episode. Join us on this journey into the world of healing within and adventure inside. Our mission is to inspire, challenge, and enlighten our audience with thought-provoking conversations and fascinating guests from a wide range of fields who can shed new light on important issues facing society today. Join us for each episode if you're ready to explore and learn about the latest developments at the intersection of cutting-edge science, spirituality, and self-improvement. Enter a world where waves, particles, and light all meet. Enter the world of healing within and adventure inside. Hi, everyone. I'm Patty Conklin, and welcome to Healing Within and Adventure Inside. Um, as many of you know, I like particle theory. I like physics. I, I like to get into that. And he has a new book out um, called The Science or The Physic of God. Physics of God. I'll get it right. Um, and so on many different levels, I'm uh, interested in his work. But Joseph, welcome. And uh, give us a little bit of background about you. What started you on this journey of of um, Yogananda and your meditation and just go back for me a little bit. Well, in some ways, my uh, college years are kind of a good example. Coming in as a uh, freshman, I thoroughly expected to have a career in, in science. Uh, I come from a very science-oriented family. And uh, as I like to joke uh, at, at the dinner table, uh, we had to... Uh, give references for anything that we said. Uh, so that was a very, one of my father's favorite um, sort of comebacks to anything I said when I was younger was, who exactly do you mean by they? They. <laughs> so, you know, I grew up um, with a mental uh, focus towards science mm -hmm. and pursued that for the first couple of years I was in college. But then I had a uh, a very transforming uh, hallucinogenic experience that uh, wasn't my first nor my last, uh -huh. but it was perhaps the most powerful experience I had in, in using hallucinogenic drugs. And it was very transforming. I felt absolutely wonderful. I felt like I became, however briefly, one day, two days, that that was the self I wanted to be. That was the person I wanted to experience all the time. And I'd already begun um, a, a search into spiritual uh, material, but this really set me in earnest. Uh, basically, I was trying to answer the question, how do I live like that always? And so I made an a abrupt change from a, a major in science to a major in philosophy and uh, spiritual practices, not spiritual practice, but spiritual studies. Yeah. And that also moved me from the University of Colorado, Colorado to 
uh, UC Berkeley in, in uh, California. And uh, it, step by step, that got me to spiritual teachings. I started off with Western philosophy, which was kind of interesting and inspiring in some ways, but dry in others, and really yeah. didn't give me any uh, practical way to, mm -hmm. to turn those thoughts into experience. But, you know, as you know, uh, everybody who's meditated, that's kind of the essence of turning philosophy and beliefs into some kind of real experience that changes your life. Right. And then that led me step by step to living in a spiritual community called Ananda, uh, where I still am today. And Ananda is a community that uh, everyone in it follows the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. Mm -hmm. And therefore we, you know, share a lot of things in common. We meditate together, uh, we sing together, we chant together. And it's a very powerful reinforcer of that um, initial choice to, to, you know, seek higher experience, to seek that personal experience um, every day in my life. Yeah. And yet I never lost my interest in science, even though I, I had that abrupt change from a major in science to a major in philosophy. Yeah. And I would call myself a, a avid lay scientist. I've read, um, you know, many, many, many books. I followed articles, information that comes to us, new discoveries, and always saw the connection between the two. And was always sorry when I read articles that, that said there was no connection or that a connection was impossible between science and what was generally referred to as religion. But I could see how you could interpret the discoveries in, of science in different ways that are not material oriented, materialistic. Yeah. And that they would support the experiences that you have um, in, in spiritual exploration. So finally, after many years of being a minister, of being a uh, business leader, I had a, bu a business in web development for, for, with 40 people for about 15 years. Uh, I got kids all the way through to college. And then I found my chance to, you know, to write about it. And that's what uh, what the physics of God is. Wow, wow, what a what an interesting life! It makes me think back to uh, when you when you went uh, change your major from science to uh, philosophy. Um, what reference point did you give your dad um, at that point? Um, was he supportive of that? Was he? No, he I was mean, not supportive of he that. Not, he pretty I mean, much thought I had lost my mind. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but years later. He came to appreciate that uh, I had done well in my life. You know, I had a, a great family. I had a good mind. I was able to, uh, you know, function in the world in ways that he could relate to, you know, yes. running a business and having that kind of success. Right. Uh, but he never did embrace the, uh, the spiritual side, unfortunately. The spiritual side. As a, as a, uh, 19 year old, I married into an engineering family. And so uh -huh. I, I got very used to the references, you know, mm -hmm. where, where, what reference did you get that from, you know, where, where that information come from. And I like you, I can't say that, you know, they years later, you know, not with the family anymore, but you know, my ex saying, well, I guess you didn't turn out too bad um, uh -huh. way of saying that, well, okay, you know, you, you've been successful in your life, but I still don't have the reference point. So made me uh, think back on that of just, uh, um, you know, people want to know, I mean, they, they, especially if we're linear um, focused and in, in wanting to have a linear line of what's taking place and, and having that thought process from point A to point B, sometimes it's a challenge for people to realize that, well, C, D, and E can come in uh, between A and B, and we don't have to be right. a linear right. process. Well, that yeah. was one of the main reasons that I did write the book is that uh, people like my father uh, and, and many people I have met in my life's travels and business, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and many of them 
want to believe in higher truths. They want to believe in higher consciousness. They want to believe that they themselves can have such an experience, mm -hmm. but what they think science is telling them holds them back yeah. Yeah. and makes them doubt the possibility or even just conclude that it is just impossible. So why should I put any time into this kind of um, pursuit? Right. But well, it, it's not the truth. And that, that really is the, the, the core of the book is that science supports spiritual experience far from uh, conflicting with it. Yeah. I mean, it, it comes all down to perspective. It seems like, you know, if you're with you writing a book, The Physics of God, um, you know, and looking at science and, and uh, from a physics point of view and, and God in terms of the spirituality or or a religious point of view. Um, people who read it now will have a greater understanding of what science means. But I mean, if we're going back to old school, just science, it's, you know, if a, if a, sci if a scientist doesn't believe that there's anything more then the writings, whether they're mathematical or whatever, are just going to be points in time. And, and, you know, just talking to astronauts who have been um, up in space and been up mm -hmm. in, in the um, universe, you know, going up atheists, coming back, believing that there's something, not quite sure what it is, but changing their focus and still being able to stand by their scientific model of what they uh, think things many are. Many people may have uh, heard of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, yeah. ions as it's called, uh -huh. uh, but not everybody knows that it was actually started by Edgar Mitchell, right. one of the uh, Apollo astronauts, Apollo astronauts, because he had this profound experience while he was returning from the moon, their orbit of the moon, yeah. and uh, wanted to understand how it could be possible. What did he actually experience? Yeah. And so he, he dove in, he, he, you know, funded a uh, a group of people to to find the answers. Yeah. So yeah. yes, you know, many people who are scientifically minded uh, have made this leap of understanding that there is personal, profound experience that goes beyond what uh, scientific materialism tells us. Yeah. And in fact, a, a Pew uh, research uh, led to uh, a a sampling that indicated 51% of scientists, you know, self-identifying uh, scientists, uh, believed in higher consciousness, believed in God. So it's not as black and white as it as it might seem. Yeah. Uh, and those those scientists may be, you know, searching for a way to make that connection, or they may just have made the decision in their mind that you know, science can't find the information there, but that information is true. Yeah. So uh, not, not all scientists are alike. I, I agree. I mean, certainly in the last 10 years, I've seen a lot more engineers, physicists, um, physicians in my workshops, you know, just mm -hmm. coming in, wanting to have an understanding and, um, and, and just doing their searching, which is, which is awesome. Just, you know, reaching out and seeing who they resonate with and who they don't resonate with and what makes sense right. to them. What, what brought about the physics of God? I, I have not read it. I will read it. Um, but I always like to do an interview and not have read the book because I, I would love to hear why I want to read it. Why do I want to read well, it? Well, then what I was hoping to do, uh, and many people have told me that I succeeded in doing it, was to um, present the deeper uh, subjects of science, such as uh, quantum physics and string theory and M theory, uh, in such a way that uh, a lay person could easily understand mm -hmm. what they are, and then to compare what those subjects tell us to the deeper experiences of um, the saints and sages and near-death experiencers who have described their 
powerful experiences, um, you know, transcendent, infinite experiences that they have and put them together to try to marry these deep experiences of the, of the mystics with the deep theories of science. And one core theory that I found amazingly um, congruent with not only the experiences of uh, saints and sages and, and near-death experiencers, but also um, the sort of fundamental tenets of religion. Uh -huh. And so M theory, in a nutshell, posits that our universe is just one of potentially unlimited numbers of universes that could exist in uh, what they call the bulk, which I think is the single most terrible name ever given to an exciting uh, scientific theory. But the bulk is a, a realm of pure energy that exists in two dimensions, which is very hard for us to visualize mm -hmm. because we live in a three-dimensional physical universe, but that this two-dimensional realm is vast, if you want to think of it that way, uh, and is so vast that it can include all these universes within it. Yeah. And that this is the other big leap uh, that M theory makes is that their mathematics tell them that the universe we exist in is created from this bulk or what I like to call the energy verse because I mm -hmm. think it's more descriptive of what it really is. Yes. And that in the energy verse, uh, is the is the template for the physical universe is the intelligent orderly holographic template and that the physical universe is a holographic projection from there and this is head scratching for you know millions of people who have run into this idea yeah. and you you immediately start to think most people immediately start to think this must be some wacky fringe theory of, of um, people who've been playing too many video games that uh, and, and seldom know that this actually originated from the like the highest minds of physicists working on M theory. You know, Stanford University is the is the center of this study around the world. Wow. And the, no, the notion that the our physical universe is a holographic projection is central to M theory. It's not just a odd facet of M theory. It's, it's critical to the, the way in which M theory is structured. Right. So, so we have a, for all intents and purposes, an infinite two dimensional energy verse. And from that we have the universe that we exist in being created. So now compare that to the descriptions of the mystics and near death experiencers of when they die, going to two dimensional, purely luminous realms right. that we call the heavens. And that there are layers of heavens, which is also echoed in M theory because they talk about layers, a layer like structure of the energy verse. Yeah. So I think without any intention to do so, that M theorists actually created a, a or not created, but actually identified where the heavens could exist. Wow. They, they exist beyond the physical universe, but where is that? And yeah. so M theory, you know, provides a possibility for where they could be and provides a structure to it, the, um, the bulk, to the energy verse of layered 
dimensions that each one is um, composed of higher and higher frequency energy. And if you read about the heavens in various religions and from the descriptions of mm -hmm. saints and sages, they too are layered, that there are lower heavens and higher heavens. There's a seventh heaven. Uh, yeah. The Buddhists have you know, 10 and sometimes 25 heavens that are each though uh, a layer above or below another heaven. Yeah. So that, just that again, it's an intrinsic, there's an intrinsic need according to the mathematics of M theory for the energy verse to be layered, to, to be have layered. these different um, levels or, or different densities of energy yeah. In, in a layer like fashion. Yeah. And then the notion that um, the universe is a holographic projection from a template within the, the energy verse also fits many um, ancient philosophical principles as above, so below is, is one of the ways in which it's that's it's right. expressed frequently in many, many traditions. And that uh, in the Hindu and Buddhist uh, conceptions of the heavenly realms, the earth is just the lowest most realm. It doesn't uh, separate them in some fundamental way. It's just that right. the, earth, the earth is an expression with the lowest energy density or with the, uh, uh, the, the lowest frequency of all of these different realms yeah. and that each realm uh, has a higher frequency and therefore has a higher um, level of intellect, of clarity, of understanding that comes with each one of those realms. So yeah. I found this utterly fascinating yeah. that this one uh, theory uh, M theory, which is one of several of many uh, mm -hmm. variations of string theory, right, would so amazingly uh, be congruent with how the saints and sages tell us reality is organized. Right, and right. That's, I mean, it just, it boggles my mind and it doesn't boggle my mind. I mean, right in reading ancient texts or, or ancient um, mystics, um, you know, and just so simply out of the mouth of babes, you know, just remembering when, when my son was nine and, um, and he just looked at me one day and he said, you know, I just wonder, I mean, he's got that, that engineering brain. It's like, I just wonder, it just seems like there's so many different layers of frequency and it seems like people just are getting all wigged out about frequency. And I'm beginning to wonder if God maybe has a father and that father, his, God's father is getting closer to this universe and is heightening the frequency because there's more steps. Mm -hmm. And I remembered at nine, just looking at him going, huh, hadn't thought about it that way. But for his, for his brain at that point, I mean, it, and it's something he's followed through in his writings and fantasy and so forth. I just, um, it makes a lot of sense. It makes sense from a scientific point of view, and it makes sense from a mystic point of view or an, a frequency point of view, what you're saying of the different, mm -hmm. the different levels and how we look at that. And even just people who uh, say that they've talked to people from the other side, they, they talk about the different levels. Um, how true is that in your own world? Not, you know, not so much in what you're reading or, or what your um, uh, background is, but for you personally? Well, I think that for me, the, the experiences of meditation are really that, you know, that I've had in meditation um, just confirm for me, you know, what I've learned that yeah. uh, it's not as if I have a frequency meter that you know is attached to me while I meditate uh -huh. great if somebody could come up with one right but uh, they don't exist but I can tell in my meditations that uh, as I grow 
less aware of my body as my body stills and and uh, my interest in you know the senses begins to diminish uh, because my eyes are closed and my body is still that that awareness of the body going away allows me to become aware of my subtle astral body, my higher frequency body, mm -hmm. uh, just automatically, you know, that, that there's uh, a lot of um, stories, a lot of, um, you know, sort of principles in various uh, experiential spiritual traditions yeah. that the body has to be sort of taken out of the equation that, mm -hmm. that people go into deep trances, which basically means they're no longer aware of the body at all. Mm -hmm. And when they go into those trances, they are immediately aware of uh, higher realms and higher consciousness. Yeah. And we see this with near death experiences. I mean, near death experiences are basically doing what I try to do in meditation <laughs> all the time, which is to become completely unaware of my body. Of your body. Um, yeah. They become completely unaware of their body with no intention to do so in such a drastic fashion, which we think is that they were killed. Yeah. Or they died. Or they die. Yeah. But when they come back, what they say is, wow, there is this amazing, fantastic, heart opening, mind opening realm that I just experienced. And they come back changed. They come back uh, no longer afraid of death and much clearer that what they're supposed to do here is to learn to love and to give to others and be of service. Right. And that's all that, all that matters. Yep. Uh, and, and you still have to you know, live your life and have jobs and take care of family and do all those things. But while you're doing them, the most important thing you can be doing is, you know, giving love, being, being uh, caring in all your interactions with other people, being compassionate about people yes. who are having difficulties, um, making people feel loved in even the simplest interactions with people. I mean, the simplest one is just a big smile, a warm, genuine smile. But That's right. uh, taking the time to, even in a, an email, even if you're a, a busy person mm -hmm. sending out a gazillion emails, you know, take time to say something positive about that person yes. in, the, in the course of responding to what they need to, to hear from you. Just right. use every moment as this opportunity, wonderful opportunity to give and share love with others because you feel so much better and that elevates your, your yeah. vibrational level as well. So Absolutely. it's um, it's amazing how much we can live in this world, but not be of it not living for it, not yeah. living for what it can give to us, but for what we can give to others while we're, you know, playing our part in this, in this drama. I, I totally agree. Totally agree. I just uh, did a little meditation this morning about that because I do believe we're here to be of service and, and, and part of that being of service is that kindness and that love and consideration and compassion. And it's just so important. And I thank you for so much for, for coming on today and, and uh, bringing the loop around, you know, just uh, now I'm going to sit and read the book and I'd love to have you back on after I read the book and, and we'll do part two, but mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate your willingness to, to be here and, and help people understand that it's not an either or uh, between science and, and uh, spirituality, that it really can be one and, and uh, bridged. So thank you, Joseph. I really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to talk with you and happy to come back uh, if you if you would like. I would love you to. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.